These bad boys are back for the first time in what feels like forever. And they are back in a way that I've never seen them before. Dare I say, better than the original. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on these bad boys right here. This was originally known as the Adidas KB8, Kobe Bryant's first signature shoe ever. But nowadays they're just known as the Adidas Crazy 8. And to be perfectly fair, that name sucks. Now these guys right here released originally back in 1998, and while this was not the most popular shoe in 1998, it was still really dope to see these on a basketball court, especially on the feet of one Kobe Bryant. Now this was one of the original colorways. This is done up in a much different way than the original, so I was really surprised by that. Most people might not notice from images, but all of the original white coloring that is on the shoe is not white on these guys. It's actually like an off-white or cream, so they got that pre-aged vintage look on there, which some people might love some people are instantly going to be turned off by it whichever one you are feel free to leave us a comment down below because I mean that's what it's for to be fair I saw these sitting on the kitchen counter and I thought they were an eBay purchase that you did like um, a, an old one yeah because the leather everything just looks like it's been sitting in someone's garage so that's the main thing that's like way different which I was gonna get into a little bit later but I guess I'll just get into it now the materials on these are so much better than the original like the original original Adidas models, at least from my era of basketball, like my high school era, the majority of them used synthetics. So Adidas was never, at least in my era, again, never really known for premium stuff. They were just doing their own thing aside from like Nike Jordan and everything. And then these guys came out, they were fairly popular. I always loved this colorway, the white and black colorway, which I really hope releases. I've never owned those before, as well as the infamous all-star colorway, which is the pair that we reviewed way long ago on this channel, including the performance review. Good shoe, by the way, just need some cushion. Move insoles can help you with that. But it was also a shoe that was tied synonymously with the Air Jordan 13 playoff, even though they were debuted in that same All-Star game, which is why some people call them the All-Stars, the 13s. But anyways, the materials here are just so much nicer than the original. We have actual nubuck and actual suede. So I know that some complaints that I've read online in like various comment sections on Instagram and stuff have been like, oh, why they look all dingy, which is to your point, like they do look faded. They don't look as rich and as black as the originals. And does that bother me? Not really. I mean, it was a little bit weird when I first pulled them out of the box. I was like, whoa, that is not what I was expecting. But it's so nice that I don't mind it. Like this, I feel like I got way more than my money's worth. What I was originally buying was nostalgia but what I ended up getting was nostalgia and premium materials which I was like super happy about so for that I love it you know what I mean like that's why I mean like dare I say better than the originals is it actually better than the original version I mean I don't know if we're just comparing apples to apples then obviously yes because this is premium in comparison is it actually better than the original and that's where I'm like I will not say that you know what I mean like these fit different and all that stuff so not quite the same shoe even though they look like it however the performance features start at the outsole and these guys guys feature herringbone this is one of the things that I remember like not being great so this is an area where it could have been upgraded obviously they're just making a retro not like a pro tro or a resto mod over at Adidas so they weren't doing that I do wish that they did but it'd be interesting to know if they end up doing it eventually however the herringbone right here I just remember because it's so tight and compact that it just got caked with dust really quickly so you would have great traction one play and then wipe out the next so make sure that you're always wiping that is if you decide to grab these for performance which which, I mean, I don't know if many of you guys will be. Now, as far as the cushioning is concerned, again, that's where the shoe really could have used an upgrade. I wish that these were somewhat of a resto mod. Like, I wish that they used bounce foam instead of just regular old EVA, but that is what's in here. The original source of cushion actually was just the foam itself, and the main selling feature was the feet you wear aspect. So that was supposed to be like a one-to-one -one feel and fit as far as mobility and support and all of that kind of stuff. So that's what we've got here. This, to me, is the best version of feet you wear as far as like the best feeling and it's because all of the potted areas aren't actually like bubbles underneath your feet like some of the previous models in the EQT line so instead we still have all the flexibility and mobility that you would get naturally within your foot but they've done it in a much flatter area and all of the pods or the bubbles that you see on the outsole much like the Air Jordan 13 coincidentally are there for support features the insole itself is typical Adidas garbage so you can take that out and swap it in for anything else and despite how bulky these things look you actually 
actually do sit quite low to the ground. So again, court feel is a good thing for some. And if that's what you're looking for, then these guys offer it. Again, like I was saying before, the materials are just bar none better than the originals. They actually launched in three colorways, or they haven't launched yet. But if you go to the Adidas Basketball Instagram account, they actually announced that these guys were releasing on the 15th. And then there were two other colorways. One is kind of like a, a grayish silver look, which looks amazing, even though it's not an original colorway. And then we have this other colorway that's like bright orange with a light blue, also looks amazing. So, so far out of the full three pair package or whatever, this is the only original style colorway. So again, I really hope that we get that original white and black colorway and the all-star colorway, because I miss those. I really wish I didn't get rid of those. Now, they are a little bit different from the originals with certain design elements. The most jarring, the most notable for me, I really wish that they did not do this. It's actually right here at the base of the lace. There's the feet you wear guy. He was never there in the first place. It was always Kobe's number eight logo. I guess that's the nostalgic side of me where I'm like, why the f did you do that? That's why they called them the crazy eight still. And they left the eight on all the previous retros because they're like, well, we can at least keep them the same and just call them something different. But now they call them the crazy eights. They remove the eight. And it's like, why the f is that? Like, what the f why would you erase him from that? But you would put out the infinity shoe with the little like sideways infinity. And I, I get that it's a, an infinity logo, but we all know that that was a number eight turn sideways. You know what I mean? Like, come on. So if I'm going to give them any sh besides for the insole, that's it. Like, why the hell did you remove that thing? Put the eight back, please. However, there's other things that just look really great, like the originals, like the Adidas embroidered logo at the collar. They even put the feature wear guy back on the interior medial collar, which I don't remember being on my other retros. So uh, if that's something that they put back and you've had all the pairs, please let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to know that. The Adidas equipment logo looks awesome on the tongue. The tongue itself is fairly thin. And then even the liner inside, they did their best best to recreate or replicate the original. So again, I think that that looks really great. Another head scratcher to me though, besides the missing number eight, is actually this back logo right here on the heel. It's just a simple three stripe Adidas branding and it's done up in Lakers purple and gold. Looks great, just like the original. However, when you flip the shoe over and you see the torsion system, what color is that? That's Warriors, baby. W what the <laughs> is that like i don't remember the original looking like that either so if i'm misremembering please correct me down below in the comment section but i swear that was purple and gold too so like i don't know if i'm just tripping or what but i had pulled these things out of the box and i flipped them over instantly and i was like what the hell is that and yes i'm a warriors fan because i'm from the bay area but still i, I want to see kobe's stuff on here you know like it was his shoe now as far as fit is concerned this is where adidas is really kind of being uh i want to call it weird but just it's not normal at least for adidas most of us have been used to going down half a size in the majority of their stuff and then in recent years have been a little inconsistent some things are true to size some things are not these guys and those infinity shoes are the same thing where it's like bro they don't fit true to size they actually fit small i don't know why like these are a nine and a half my toes still are at the edge and hurt and i'm like i never go like never except for the horizon the runner not the b-ball one but like that's like the only shoe ever that i think i've ever gone up a full f size with and so what is happening over there like what what happened and what changed because that is not normal so yeah if you're gonna buy these what i would recommend is trying them on first off because the sizing might be a big hit or miss however if you're unable to find them in store to try on your best bet is probably going up half a size initially and hoping and praying to the sneaker gods that they actually fit you properly please <laughs> Because one of the things that I also feel like was a kind of like a missed opportunity is just the overall fit. Like I'm talking about the upper around your foot. When I put them on, I like to wear my shoes a little loose until I go to tie them up to play. And they are hella loose. Like lengthwise, they're tight. But around my foot wise, I feel like my foot is too thin for them. Like it's very weird. I feel like I'm swimming in them. Kind of like I feel like I'm swimming right now. My face is just dripping with sweat. This is insane. Where's the in Delta Breeze. It shows up in the evening. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's yes, still it does. it's still 90 <laughs> degrees out there at night, man. Like this is this is crazy. This is like Vegas weather. I'm I'm melting. Some people are worth melting for. But anyways, that's pretty much it for these guys right here. Again, this is the Adidas Crazy 8, originally known as the Adidas KB8. Kobe Bryant's first signature sneaker ever. And I know that some people count the EQT line as some of his first stuff. Those were just more endorsement stuff. So like they paid him to wear those. They didn't have a shoe ready yet, but he was getting a signature shoe and that's what the KB series is. That then later on changed to the Kobe series, which was the Audi looking stuff, the really out there. Sh and we did briefly go over all of that history history in the Adidas Crazy Infinity review. Plus we have reviewed every single shoe within the line at this point. So if you have not checked it out, do it. But anyway, sound off below. We would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one.